All right, so let's tackle this uh, this monster hive here. So this this hive overwintered with the it has three deep boxes. So this was a really strong hive going into winter, and and uh, you know so it had three boxes that were all pretty full of bees and honey. I would say two of the boxes were pretty full of bees, and then another box was mostly full of honey. So we we just left it three deep. So I usually would try to reduce it down to just two boxes going into winter. But this one was super strong, and so it's okay to leave it, you know, three boxes if they're, you know, if they all have quite a bit of bees in it. So we left it. Um, I might go ahead and pull it down to just two boxes today. Let's just see how they're looking. So right off the bat, I can see that uh, I've got bees peeking at me through the inner cover, which is always a good thing to see. We've got some bees on the inner cover, which is cool. And then I've got several frames of bees, you know, looking down at the top here. So I'm going to give them some smoke and then see what we got going on. So looking between the frames, you know, I can see that they're pretty much just full of honey. You know, I don't see a lot of brood looking down between the frames. I think this top box is just a box full of, whoa, full of honey. Yeah. So you can see they've just got gobs and gobs of honey up here. <laughs> so, uh, so this top box, it's got some bees in it, but it's mostly just a box completely full of honey. So I'm gonna set it aside. Oh, wow. Yep, yep, it's full of honey. Oh, very full. So that's good. Certainly no food needed here. Um, the next box has got one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven frames of bees in it. And again, I always just calculate that by looking down between the frames and you can quickly count how many frames of bees there are uh, in the hive. So that's a great estimation of strength is if you count between all the frames, um, see how many frames of bees there are and then total them up across the whole hive, you know, it's a good estimation of uh, the, the overall strength. So. I am uh, gonna start with the second frame here and see what we have going on kind of as we're getting down into this primary brood nest area. Ah, oh, so cool. Look at this. How cool is this? I mean, there's nothing like in the early spring just seeing all this fresh new brood in a hive. So, you know, we've got pollen, we've got honey up here in the corners. We've got pollen a beautiful ring of pollen, um, beautiful frame of brood. You know, this hive just is meeting expectations. So I'm gonna set that frame aside. Uh, the outside frame here, I don't usually look at the outside frame. I usually just leave it be, but I'm gonna take a quick, pick, quick, ugh, quick peek. So worth doing. This is pretty much a frame of, uh, a frame of pollen. So you can see the, uh, the pollen, of course, the honey around the edges. Um, and then you've got this multicolored pollen, mostly, uh, mostly kind of that yellow, a little bit of orange. Um, probably some from henbit, some from the plum starting to bloom. Uh, dandelion is often that darker colored pollen. But, uh, you know, beautiful frame of pollen. Exactly what I want to see this time of year. Notice I don't really have pollen patties on this hive. Uh, we'll talk about pollen patties um, a different time. You know, usually we feed those in the fall, but uh, the only time I really feed them in the spring is if, it's, if there's a week to 10 days of cold and the bees can't get out and forage, then I might give them a pollen patty because with all this brood in the hive, um, without pollen for 10 days, they'll start cannibalizing the brood. So if I've got like a 10 day cold front, where it's not over about 55 degrees and the bees can't get out and fly, then I'll throw some pollen patties on. But that doesn't all usually happen, but if it does, the pollen patty doesn't hurt. So I'll let you guys see if you can uh, spot the queen on this frame. But uh, the queen is on this frame. She's looking absolutely beautiful. So if you haven't seen her yet, she's right here. So she is looks great. We'll probably go ahead and requeen in April. We'll requeen all these hives because they haven't been requeened since last year. So in our April webinar, we'll talk about requeening and uh, we'll, we'll do a demonstration out in the bee yard 
on, uh, on how to requeen. So um, this next frame, <laughs> uh, I left it in here because it happens and somehow a medium frame uh, got uh, left in a deep box. And so you can see what happens when you have a medium frame stuck in a deep box. The bees will uh, turn it into a deep frame. <laughs> so the interesting thing is usually when they draw out excess comb, it's drone comb. And so all that comb there at the bottom of this frame, all of this, this is all drone, drone brood. When they draw out this excess comb or an extra sheet of comb, it's almost always drone comb. So you can see the drone, these are actually uh, drone cells. You can see they're kind of larger especially these down here, they're larger and bumpier than the worker bee cells. What some beekeepers do, and it's really not a bad idea, um, what some beekeepers do is they'll actually do this, uh, even commercial beekeepers, they'll do this intentionally. They'll have a, uh, a medium frame and a deep box. They might have a couple of these. And then every time they go into the bee yard, um, the bees will have drawn out fresh drone comb and then the queen will lay drones in it. And then they'll just scrape it off and throw it away. And, uh, you know, the varroa mites are more attracted to the drone brood. And so you tend to, when you scrape it off and throw it away each trip, you're getting rid of a decent chunk of the varroa mites in the hive. Uh, it's certainly not enough to fully control varroa mites, but it's not a, it's not a terrible thing to do to uh, help reduce down your varroa mite uh, levels in addition to other forms of management. So, I mean, this hive is just uh, really beautiful. I mean, I'm not gonna go through every frame, but I mean, it's got several frames of brood. The bees aren't terribly happy because, you know, it's uh, cloudy out here. But they've got several frames of brood in here. Uh, looks like they've got about one, two, three, four, five, about six frames of brood in this box. We'll take a really quick peek in the bottom box. I'm not expecting them to have much down there, but about the time I go expecting something is when the bees will uh, surprise me every time. So let's take a quick, quick peek in the very bottom box and just see if I'm missing anything down there. Oh, yeah, see? I should just keep my mouth shut until I uh, actually do finish an inspection. Because <laughs> they've actually got, uh, this bottom box is pretty stinking full too. I wasn't expecting them to be this strong. So do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I usually recommend starting on the outside and pulling the frame out instead of starting in the middle. But if I'm in a hurry, I will often pull a frame right out of the middle. I mean, this is pretty cool. I mean, you think I haven't like seen this a thousand times like I have, but I just, I find it cool every time. I'm trying to get the angle right, but this frame is pretty much completely full of larva. Um, you can kind of see at the top center there, um, the lighting isn't quite good enough to get a great shot of it, but the uh, top center there is just uh, full of lar older larva and uh, the bottom's full of larva. So this is a frame completely full of larva. It looks like in total down here, they've got, see how many frames of brood. They've got, that's all nectar. So I, if you're in a hurry, you can often look between the frames and kind of count frames of brood because those brood, uh, the cat brood kind of sticks out a little bit and sometimes you can kind of see it down between the frames. So they've got one, two, three, four frames of brood down here and about six frames of brood up top. So this hive is a good problem because they've already got, you know, nine to 10 frames of brood and today is March 1st. So, you know, we're a month from being able to get mated queens to make a split. So this hive, there's a good chance it's gonna swarm before April 1st, let's say, when we can get queens. They're already at, you know, nine to 10 frames of brood. So again, it, it's a problem, but it's a good problem. So what I'm going to do with a hive like this is um, I'm going to uh, do a couple different things. Um, I don't wanna to try to split right now. You could, you could take this hive, go ahead and split, and let them raise their own queens. 
but it's too early to do that. There's not often enough drones to successfully mate with the queen. I don't like letting queens open mate until I see, um, you know, or I don't like to make a split and let them raise their own queen until I'm seeing adult drones in the hive, um, or at the very least, um, adult drones hatching out. Because even after a drone hatches, it still takes a drone two weeks to be mature enough to mate with the queen after it's hatched. I'm not seeing drones in this hive. I'm seeing some drone brood, so I'm getting there, um, but not a lot. I mean, I'm seeing like a dozen drone, you know, this whole hive might have 20 drone cells, and this is a very strong hive. So it's just too early to let the bees successfully raise their own queen. So if, if splitting and letting them raise their own queen isn't an option, which again, in general is not something I recommend in March anyway, then my other option is to try to give them plenty of room so that they don't swarm. Now they've already got three boxes, right? So that that's, should be enough to prevent swarming. But to be extra safe, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a medium box and I'm gonna put it underneath this bottom deep box. So um, I don't have one out here uh, right now. Actually, um, hang on, I'm gonna go grab one. I'll be right back. Okay, never mind. I, <laughs> I thought I had a dead out over here with a medium on it, but opened it up and it was full of bees. So I'm going to go back to the shop and I'm going to get a, uh, a medium box of empty comb and I'm going to put it underneath this deep box. Bees are very slow to swarm if you have extra space underneath the brood boxes. So I'm going to get a medium box, a shallow box would work too that's full of empty frames, and I'm gonna put it underneath this deep box and then stack all these right back up on top. And uh, that combined with the extra deep box that I already have on top should give them plenty of space and theoretically should prevent them from swarming um, before I can get queens and make a split. So put a medium box underneath, you can put an empty box up on top as well, with a really strong hive like this, it's okay to give them a surplus of room and it's gonna keep them from swarming before you get queens to make a split.